Hi, it's Jeff Alpin, the Big Game Hunter, and welcome to Career Coach Office Hours. I like to spend some time Tuesdays at noon Eastern answering questions from people about job search, because one thing I do know is that it doesn't have to be as hard, difficult, or painful as it is for so many of you. It's just the skills needed to find a job are different from those needed to do a job. And most of you make the mistake of acting as though if you recite the answers to a bunch of questions, you'll get hired. And we both know, we all know, because time and again it's proven, it doesn't work that way. There are other factors that come into play. So I started this show, I actually started a few years ago, interrupted it for a while, and brought it back about six months ago where I take questions from job hunters about their search. I answer them live. It's available on LinkedIn, YouTube, and on Facebook. On Facebook, it's on my uh, page called Jeff Altman, The Big Game Hunter. I, I made a mistake when I set up the page. and It's that simple. I can't change it anymore. So the long and the short of it is I'm here to answer your questions. So if you've got a question for me, put it into chat so I can answer it live. I also am putting in the chat how you can reach me. So my website is, well, let me start off with my LinkedIn profile, linkedin.com forward slash IN forward slash The Big Game Hunter. If we're not connected yet on LinkedIn, send me a connection request. I'd love to answer it for you. I have a podcast called No BS Job Search Advice Radio, which comes out seven days a week with advice for job hunters good anywhere in the world. Now, most of the time it's short shows, but because I'm going to be away next week, I'm recycling some old interviews that I did with experts about job search. So those are going to be you know, 30 to 40 minute shows. The following week, it's going to be one minute shows. It's like my way of averaging it out for you so that this way I can help. Now, if you want to get more advice from me, if you want to get help from me, there's jobsearch.community. See that there? And it's also down below, jobsearch.community, where I have video courses, books, and guides available for people. Now, I've got some free ones that are available on the homepage. Go there, download them, have fun. They will be helpful. They're incomplete because I'm Right now, I think I have 30 courses and books that are available on the site. And if you become an insider, you get access to all of them. Plus, you can ask me questions through the site to which I'll respond normally within 24 hours. If you become an Insider Plus member, which for many of you is perfect, what you're able to do is get all of the, what I mentioned that insiders get, but you also get me for two Zoom calls a month. And if you become an Insider Premium member, you get all of what I've mentioned, all the video courses, books, and guides, the ability to message me through the site, get me on a couple of quick Zoom calls per month, plus we do individual or group coaching at my discretion. Again, that's jobsearch.community. And of course, I've got career coach office hours on Tuesdays at noon Eastern. I'm sorry that that looks messy, but the fact is they were on individual lines, and when I merge the when I brought this up uh, for chat, it's turned it into a little bit of a mess. So jobsearch.community and Tuesdays at noon Eastern, I do career coach office hours. Now I'll just say next week I'm going to pre-record a show because I'm going to be away. Uh, my wife and I are going to Vermont. We're going to visit our son who just moved there. Uh, he's going to be working at an upscale resort there called Twin Farms. And uh, and we're going to spend a few days with him, see how he's doing, buy him a few things, because that's what parents do, right? You visit your 20-some-odd-year-old kid. He's 23 now, uh, and you know, he's just moved into a new place, and you help him in one way or another. So that's what we're going to be doing next week. So I'm going to pre-record a show. Uh, it'll be new material uh, primarily. Um, I may sneak in some old stuff, but the long and the short of it is it's a pre-recorded show, so I won't be taking questions live. Uh, but uh, I'll just simply say uh, the following week I'll be back with a, a, a show like this one where 
uh, what I do is I answer your questions. So recently I've been giving a job search tip, but I'm not going to do that today. I'm just going to go right into it and answer questions from people about their search. Now, whether you know, if you can't make a show live, you know, when you see the link for it, uh, I'll just say, mark that you'll attend on LinkedIn. Then, you know, send me your questions through LinkedIn and watch the replay. I'll answer your question live. Uh, and for this week, don't wait till Tuesday because the show will be put in the queue on Friday for release on Tuesday. The following week will be a more typical show. Okay. So I received a number of questions in advance of this one. And again, if you've got a question for me, put it into chat so I can answer it live. Okay. Now, this one was someone who saw in the system for a firm that they were interviewing with that the job application changed from reviewed to submitted. What does that mean? I think HR reviewed the application. And thus, that's what reviewed means. Submitted. What does that mean? They sent it to the hiring manager for their okay. Uh, so they've got a structured situation. They're obviously a substantial firm. Uh, and in, in working with as many resumes as they receive, what they're doing is you know, receiving the resume, that's been noted in the system. They're reviewing in HR and deciding who to submit to the hiring manager. I'm sure there's an option that would say uh, no longer under consideration, which is the polite way of saying rejected. So that's what they're communicating here when they're saying it's been submitted. So the next question I received is, how do you even ask an employer for an update on a job offer? I can only assume, well, let me try this. The way I'm interpreting the language that you're using is that you've been told that you're getting an offer and um, you, you haven't received it yet and you're wondering where it is. Now, the other option is you've interviewed and you're acting and asking this question like, I'm getting an offer. Of course I'm getting an offer. Uh, and that's nonsense. There's no guarantee um, that you're actually getting an offer. So uh, I'll just say, in the case of the first one, you've been told you're getting an offer. Now, I have no idea how long it's been since you've been told that you're getting the offer. And that's a factor. If you got, if you got told this on Tuesday at 12 o'clock and it's Wednesday at 9 a.m., you might just simply send them a text or an email that says, just so I have a sense of when I might expect to hear from you with the offer, you know, I don't want to be a nag. When do you think the paperwork will be done and sent to me so um, I can give notice and start working at transitioning all my work? It's a nice way of doing it, right? So, and what you're doing is not asking, where's the offer? What you're doing is simply saying, uh, you told me I'm receiving an offer. I realize I didn't ask you around when I might receive it. So could you help me with that? use my language from earlier in this answer because it's much smoother than that. I'm, I'm cutting to the chase here uh, where I'm saying, um, you know, uh, where's the offer? You know, like instead use my earlier language. It's much better and much more likely to get a positive response than if you use the, uh, the short version I just gave you. Now, Here's a long question I received. Uh, I've given them my expectation. It was a lower offer, which, okay, this is in the middle of some. Uh, so I've given them my expectation. It was also a lower amount, which I, then I first asked for. 
And they said to negotiate it. And out of nervousness, I've said yes. Now, it sounds like you accepted a job offer, but it was for less money than you really wanted, but you said yes. Um, if you try to negotiate at least a bit better than they said, uh, now doing after research, I found out, I'm not sure what that other sentence means. Now, after doing research, I found that there's more uh, more money, I'll simply say. I can ask for it, depending upon my experience in market research. So here's what it comes down to. So can I ask them now, I haven't received an email yet for the offer letter, so is it a good time to say all of this now, or will it create a bad Im impact now? Okay. Long question, a little convoluted, but what I'm interpreting this as saying is um, you got a lower offer than what you really want. And now that you've done your homework, you want to get a, more of an offer. But you haven't gotten the offer letter and you don't want to turn them off. So what should you do? My first reaction is to talk with you candidly and say, if you're prepared to lose the offer, by all means, raise the subject now. Now, I say that because most firms will negotiate at least a little bit, but there are other firms that won't, and they're going to be angry and annoyed, uh, and they're going to have to go for more approvals, uh, and they have to really want you to go to this length uh, to move forward. That's some firms and their attitude. If you explain it to them as, you know, I made a mistake when I was talking about compensation. And I mentioned a number early on that I realized was too low. So what I found out is the correct salary for me based upon my research is between this and that. So could you increase the offer to get in that range in some way? And you'll hear their annoyance and disappointment. Don't fall for it. Um, you know, they may say, if we don't do anything, will you take the offer? I'm not sure is the truth of it. If that's true, uh, if it's not true, just simply say, I'd say yes. But the truth is, but the fact is, I'm going to be disappointed. I want to start at the right compensation level because you don't want me being susceptible to recruiter calls. And you know I'm going to get recruiter calls. I've got a great background. So I want to fully commit. I would appreciate it if the offer could be reviewed and increased to something within that range. And they'll go, We're, I'll get back to you in a day or two. Now, they're going to try and stress you out and not act so quickly to see if they can get you to freak out and say yes. Don't fall for it. But in two days, if you haven't heard anything, just simply say, I haven't heard back from you. I'm curious if you're planning on revising the job offer to get it within that range I mentioned to you and work from there. Now, again, I just want to remind you, it's certainly possible that you will lose the offer, that they will turn you down because some firms do that. And I just, you know, I'm not saying this firm will because I have no idea who they are and how they act under these conditions, but some firms do. So I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that to you so that you're prepared just in case. I'm trying to be helpful here for you. Uh, so I'll just simply say two days after you have this conversation, then ask them, uh, when you might expect to receive the actual offer and offer letter, okay? I'll just remind you, if you've got a question about your job search, put it into chat so I can answer it live, okay? I received more questions, and this one is, oh, yes, I remember you. Is it possible for people to get jobs without interviews solely through resumes and applications in the tech industry? I'm sure it's happened, but I have to tell you, why would you go to work for a firm that didn't meet you? Seriously, don't you want to meet your manager? 
your future manager, the team you'd be working with, get a clearer idea of the work other than reading a job description. Now, some consulting firms may do that where they'll, we need 25 people on a project and we're just going to look at resumes, confirm that you are who you say you are by asking three questions and make an offer to you. And if it's not you, we've got 400 other resumes of people that we're going to contact. But that's about them. That's not about you. I come back to the, why would you want to go to work for a firm and not speak to people who work there and get a flavor for who your colleagues will be and more? So I'll just say, yes, it's possible, but why would you want to be hired under these conditions? Is it possible for LinkedIn to share our profiles with recruiters or other companies without our consent? Of course. Of course. You know, the way it works is someone searches for a background and your profile appears. That's it. It doesn't even require that they have a premium account like LinkedIn Recruiter. It just requires that they or some recruiter does a search on LinkedIn for particular keyword skills within a particular geographic area at a certain level of experience and finds you. That's what you want to have happen, right? You're looking for a job or you want to be approached about opportunities that might be professionally advantageous for you, pay you more, do more interesting work, et cetera, et cetera. Of course, that's what they do for a living. They are a file cabinet for people and their backgrounds, like a giant version of a, um, of a job board as a giant version of a file cabinet with a billion resumes in it. They call them LinkedIn profiles, but it's their version of a resume. Yes, you get the service for free. Of course, and they're telling you one of the ways that we can help you is by getting, you know, staying connected with people from your career. Those people aren't necessarily uh, trying to hire, but it becomes a way that you, they can stay connected with you. Excuse me, I'm going to sneeze at some point. Woo, I may have held it off. We'll see. But in general, a recruiter is on LinkedIn looking for talent to fill jobs. And whether they have a free or a premium account, yes, they can see your profile. Now, if you're starting to look at other people's stuff, there's a way that you can hide your identity in the privacy settings. I'm not going to go through that today. You can always have LinkedIn customer support explain the process of um, being observed is looking at someone's profile uh, where it says someone in talent acquisition at such and such company looked at your profile or someone at fill in the name of the company looked at your profile. So let me just say again, yes, of course they can look at your profile without your consent. You sign that right away uh, when you joined LinkedIn. It's that simple. This is what they sell, access to talent. And you having access to talent as well. We've got more. How do you hire the best project management manager for your business? Oh. So let me just simply say, you don't want to hire the best project manager for your business because you can't afford them. It's that simple. When people ask a question like this, they tend to be very junior, very inexperienced. And in a situation where they think asking for the best means that they can hire them, probably can't. The best in any field are paid more money than a junior person who's asking this question. And you're going to resent them. You're going to hate them because they're making a lot of money and you can pay a tenth of what they are looking for. So forget about the best. Go for someone who's qualified to do the job that you need them to do, and in addition, is a person who might fit the company and its culture, 
and can learn in your environment so that in this way, they get something out of it other than a paycheck. That's the way you're presenting this. I want to pay someone to come to work for my company and I will pay them. And what's in it for them? I will pay them. Ridiculous. Again, please put your questions about job search into the chat so I can answer them live. And we've got more question. Uh, it's a duplicate, sorry. Oh, yes. Do you need a resume format that will actually get you hired? Um, let me just put that up on the screen uh, and say to you, oh, sorry, I, wrong spot, forgot to scroll down. Do you need a resume format that will actually get you hired? Answer, you're not going to get hired based upon your resume. This kind of links to the earlier question about whether you could get hired without being interviewed. On their side, they want to talk to everyone 99.9999% of the time because they want to get a confirmation about you and your background. Because I know this may be shocking to you, but job hunters sometimes lie about their experience and their capabilities. Oh, it's a shock, but it's true. Job hunters lie, and the result winds up being employers fire them. So in an effort to avoid having problem situations with staff, what they do is they interview people to confirm that they have the knowledge that they need to have in order to do this job well, get a sense of their personality and how it will mesh with their existing employees, things along those lines. So the resume is not going to get you hired. It's that simple. Don't think of the resume as being the gateway except to be asked out on a date to be asked in for an interview. That's what your resume does. That's what your LinkedIn profile does. Um, it gets you asked out on dates. It doesn't get you hired, okay? We've got a few more here. What are the differences between LinkedIn and resume.com for building and creating resumes online? So let me say that resume.com is a site where they provide resume templates and there's some information that they offer. You know, they've got a career blog and other stuff, but it's a resume template site where you fill in the data and you have a resume. LinkedIn is different. It's much more than that. But insofar as you're thinking of resumes, they use a profile. And the profile is something that exists on their site and allows you to be hunted. It's similar to a resume, but it can be different. Some people just copy and paste their resume in. That's okay. Not ideal because there's so much more that you can do with your profile than what a resume does. But as, as someone who's no longer alive named Perry Newman said many years ago, LinkedIn is for when you want to be hunted. Resumes are for when you are the hunter. You're out there finding something. And LinkedIn is a great place. You can find things because they do have job ads there. And there are people posting job descriptions in different areas of the site, in the feed, in groups, and a whole bunch of other places. But the long and the short of it is, it's a place where you're hunted by recruiters and LinkedIn sells a service called LinkedIn Recruiter to them that allows them to search the entire database and message them. I don't know what the current number of emails someone can get by being messaged through the site, but they receive emails which get attention. And uh, if you don't respond within 90 days, uh, they lose them. If you do, it's credited back. Uh, so the long and the short of it is they're different products. One is purely a resume template that you fill in. LinkedIn is much, much more than that. Let's go to another question. And 
Oh, yes. What happens if you give two weeks notice and they ask you to leave? Ooh. Ooh. First of all, I'll feel badly for you because you tried to do it the right way and they wound up being jerks. So I'll just simply say, what happens is you're out of a job. You've done it the right way. They're annoyed and angry. They're getting rid of you. Or you have access to confidential information that they don't want you to steal as though you didn't have ample, ample opportunity to do it during the entire time you work for the firm. But they're afraid that you're going to take their data and uh, they want you out of there. So what happens is you leave. You contact your the new employer if you want to start sooner and say, hi, uh, my manager in a peak of rage uh, asked me to leave now. Is there a chance I could start early? That's what you do. And before I do the final questions, I just want to say, if you'd like my help with job hunting, go to jobsearch.community. I have free courses and, and downloads on the site. And in addition, if you become an insider, and you'll see a list of all the video courses, books, and guides I have on the homepage, and it's a lot. I think I'm up to 30 now, in addition to the ones that are public. If I'm wrong, I apologize. You can do a, a count there and see the course titles. But you get access to all my video courses, books, and guides. And depending upon the tier that you join, you can ask me questions through the site ask me questions and get me on two Zoom calls a month or ask me questions, get me on a couple of short Zoom calls a month, plus get individual or and or group coaching from me. So again, that's jobsearch.community. Now I got a message from someone. Thank you. And I don't know your name. It just says LinkedIn user. I don't need to know your name, but let's see what your question says. After the third interview, I was asked about when I where I asked about next steps. I was told you'll hear something in two weeks. Is it okay to uh, to send a follow up email to the hiring manager in HR one week after the interview to continue to show interest? Now, normally when I hear two weeks, you know I, I'm not feeling particularly optimistic. But let's assume that they were being courteous. And then they're thinking they have people on the schedule and they'll make a decision. So, so to use a phrase from dating, they're not that into you. Because if they were, they, they would say something along the lines of, in two weeks, we're going to bring people back in for a follow-up follow round. So I expect you'll hear from HR to schedule that interview, in which case you'll meet with so-and-so, so-and-so, and so-and-so. And, -so, so -and, -so. and we'll try and bring things to a successful decision. You hear more specificity. You got it, uh, a neutral message from them, two weeks. So you want to know if it's okay to follow up in one week. You're sounding like the desperate date. Now, there's nothing intrinsically wrong with this. But on their side, they're going, oh. And they're sighing. They said, we told them two weeks. Why isn't he waiting? I was in that position where I had to be the messenger for my institutional customers and convey messages to them. And I was the one doing it. Um, and the client would say, Jeff, be patient. We've got two more people to talk to, and then we'll have a decision. Your person is very good. I don't want to commit. And on and on and on. So, yes, you can do it. But frankly, I would only do it to the hiring manager. HR is going to contact the hiring manager to find out what the status is. Cut the line, get to the front, do it this way so that you don't have to wait for the middle person, the HR individual, to contact the hiring manager who may be busy, who may be annoyed that uh, he or she is contacting them, Instead, just go to directly to the hiring manager and say, I'm not trying to be a nag. I just want you to know I remain interested. Am I still under consideration? Be that direct. Because if it's a no, it's going to be a no. 
it has nothing to do with your message. If it's a yes, yes, and I still have two more people to talk to, we will be in touch next week. And that's really cool because you know more and it's more specific. You know you did well. And uh, I think that's the way I would play it if you are sufficiently uh, impatient. Now, LinkedIn user says, okay, I'll send a simple email only to the th hiring manager. Thank you, Todd. You're welcome, Todd. I'm glad I could help. And uh, I'll just simply say, I'm going to take one more question that was sent to me unless someone messages me while I'm still on here. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, how should I respond to a recruiter on LinkedIn? Okay. Courteously. Now, are you looking for something else? What did they message you? I don't know. Um, so I'm going to assume that they messaged you about a job. And I said, I have a wonderful position. I'd like to talk to you about. Um, can you give me your WhatsApp? Can you give me your phone number? How can I reach you? Send me the job description. I want to save us both some time. If it's something I'm not interested in, based upon what I read here, no reason for us to invest a lot of time. Just send me the job description. I'll need to talk to you. Yeah, sure. After I see the job description. So that in this way, you get a sense of what they're recruiting or recruiting for. I say this because a lot of people wind up in situations where they're talking to third-party uh, imbeciles. Uh, and I have to say also corporate recruiters who are imbeciles. Not often. Most corporate recruiters are pretty capable. Most third-party recruiters are capable. But I'm trying to save some time here for you so you can see what it is that they're trying to fill and thus you're not caught off guard. So even once you see the job description, when you start having the conversation, assuming that you're interested, of course, you start off the conversation with, you know, I saw the position description that you sent, but I just want to see if there's anything else that's not included there that I should know so I can address it in some of my answers. Tell me about the job as you see it now and what I can do to help. Now I sent you the job description. Yes, but sometimes with firms, their thinking about the job has changed. It's evolved as they've talked to people. I assume you're continuing to talk to them. Tell me more about the role that's not in the job description. And that's going to allow you to hear their client's current thinking about the role at the beginning of the interview. So you can talk about what you've done that matters to them and not just talk about what you've done. It helps you connect the dots between your background and what they care about. And that makes a huge difference. So I hope you found this helpful. I'll be back next Tuesday with a pre-recorded show. And the following week, I'll be back live. I'm Jeff Altman. Visit jobsearch.community. I've got free content on the homepage that will help you. And if you choose to become an Insider, an Insider Plus member, or an Insider Premium member, there's a lot there to help you. So again, that's jobsearch.community. Also, connect with me on LinkedIn. That's linkedin.com forward slash IN forward slash the big game hunter. I accept connection requests from people worldwide, except if you look like a spammer or scammer, except if you're a third party recruiter. I must say I'm getting so many scam emails. My boss asked me to contact you about and wants to have a chance to talk to you. What's your WhatsApp? Give me a break. These are the, this is an example of a kind of message I don't accept uh, and I don't get back to. And if anything, I block. So if as long as you don't look like a scammer or a spammer, I'll accept your connection request. Also, No BS Job Search Advice Radio is the number one podcast and Apple podcast for job search. Next Wednesday is episode 2900. 2,900 episodes will come in on April 3rd, 2024.
No show in the job search space is anywhere near that number of shows. And frankly, there are very few podcasts in any category that have released that amount of information. And I just mention it because, folks, I know many of you need help. And those of you who don't need help, don't think you need help, probably need it most of all. I'll just say, I'm here to help you. It's why I create as much content as I do. It's why I do a show like this. It's why I do the podcast. Again, jobsearch.community. Like if you went to my other website that I'm not going to mention here, I've got you know 12,000 posts there. Yes, they're searchable, but you're going to be searching in ways that are not going to serve you. You're going to go for one question and miss the context for a lot of it. Let me just simplify. Go to jobsearch.community, become an insider, an insider premium member, an insider plus member, whichever tier you choose. Insider is $49 a month. Insider plus is $79 a month. Insider premium is 1,000 a month. For that, you're getting a lot of time with me for us to work together for me to help you land the job. So again, jobsearch.community. Hope you have a terrific day and most importantly, be great. Take care.